Thomas J. Henry. The name you know, the firm you trust. So welcome into the show. Thanks for spending part of your day with us. Without further ado, Pickle, hit the arrow. It's time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course, when we overreact to the football weekend. Per usual, there's, there's plenty to talk about from a football weekend across the state of Texas. Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> We had... I just imagine, like, like, he needed to, like, slap someone's back at that point. Like, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> I think we had a couple of games this week in the Texas high school football ranks that allowed teams to move into what I would call the legit championship tier. Yeah. Um, well, Going from teams that we had questions about... Mm-hmm. Well, hang on. Championship tier is in in their district or in the I think statewide. Scope? Okay, okay. I think across just, the state. Just want to make sure. I think there the were teams page. across the state that that won games mm-hmm. that we think that I think were like vaulted them into the conversation of being of of needing to talk about them in a serious way as far as you know state championship is concerned. Right. One of them I think was. I, one of them, I think, was uh, honestly Port Arthur Memorial. Mm-hmm. Port Arthur Memorial was a team that, I'll be honest, we had ranked at number five in, in Dave Campbell's Texas football. And I was like, mm, I don't know. Are they a top five team? They went out there and they, they I mean, because they had a couple of games where it was really close and you're like, all right, I need to see a little bit more dominance from you guys. Well, they were dominant against LaPorte. Mm-hmm. They were spectacular. And I think really kind of vaulted themselves and proved themselves as being worthy of that rank. Yes. In that same vein, we'll talk about them again in a moment, but Burleson Centennial. Yes. We told you on Tep and Step with Ashley Pickle. <laughs> Featuring Ashley Pickle. <laughs> we told you not to be surprised if this was, because I don't think that's an upset. No, we had I think, a, I think that was a closer to a coin flip type game. Mm-hmm. We thought that they could do it and the computer had them picked. And by the way, by the way, do you remember... The computer had it Burleson Centennial by five, and mm-hmm. they won by seven. Mm-hmm. For real, guys, they're for real, and we'll talk about them in a moment. Mm-hmm. To, to you know, further on, I think, you know, there was a game that you had your eye on in in Fort Bend Marshall in Texas City. Mm-hmm. I think Fort Bend Marshall really proved themselves as a team to, to to keep an eye on. I think I think there's there were there were other teams that I think went out there. I, I hesitate to say Gilmer. Gilmer won the game of the week. They beat Pleasant Grove. 35-14, going away. I don't think they elevated themselves to the to the state championship conversation because I think they were already in the state championship conversation. Yeah. But they at the very least solidified their spot in that on that short list. I think that was a team that, that really made some noise. I think another one that I know we'll talk about in a minute, so I won't go on and on about it, but I think Columbus yep. really put people on notice that they might be one, if not one or two of the top favorites in that whole right side of the bracket. I think Winsboro. Mm-hmm. Winsboro going out there and winning a defensive slugfest against Mount Vernon, I think really vaults them into that conversation as well. And, yeah, I think that there were a number... Uh, and then we'll talk with the coach of another another one coming up here in a moment, Chilton. Mm-hmm. I thought Chilton did that. I thought Toller did that with their win over Coleman. It was one of those weeks where the win is a lot more than just another notch in the left-hand column. That for me, from the perception perspective, as somebody who's trying to, from from an analyst perspective, where I'm just trying to kind of suss out everything, that was, these were games that I think really vaulted them into a larger conversation about statewide contention. They answered questions in that regard. Thought number one. Thought number two, it's not you, it's me. Are we breaking up? I knew it was coming. Let's talk college football because a lot of the conversation, what I think is interesting about the, the the narratives surrounding college football in the state of Texas this week is it's really focusing on their opponents and what they didn't do maybe or did do versus the team in Texas. I think a perfect example is what happened at Red River. Okay. Texas wins wins Red River forty nine nothing. It's their it's their most um, it's their biggest margin of victory in Red River ever. And I think a lot of the conversation maybe I'm just in the wrong circles, 
That's entirely possible. But I think a lot of the conversation has centered around, oh man, look at the precipitous fall of Oklahoma. Look how bad Oklahoma is. Mm-hmm. Mm. Can we give a little bit of love to what Texas did? Yeah. Because I'll be honest, Texas with Quinn Ewers looks like a really good football team. Mm-hmm. And I think that what will go underrated that really proves that Texas played a good game was that defense. Defense. I mean, that yeah. defense, especially coming – name the last time you've seen a Texas team come out hot like that on defense. They played – It's been years. They played four complete quarters. Yes, from, which, the, from the jump. Which, I got to be honest, I don't know – that might be the first time they've ever done that under Steve Sarkeesian. Mm-hmm. Four complete quarters especially in Especially in a Red River game. In every phase. They looked fantastic. Uh, I think TCU. I think there's a lot of conversation about like, oh man, like Kansas, they lost their quarterback and so that really changed things. Bro, let's put some respect on TCU's name. They went to a hostile environment. I know we're talking about Kansas, but what, like they went to a hostile environment Game and, day was and there. got pushed to the wire and came away with the win and they, I mean, I don't know. They like they did the, they, they, they proved themselves on that big stage. On like on the flip side, I, I think Texas State's another one. We'll talk about them in a moment. But like that win over App State, I think people are like, "Oh man, what's wrong with App State?" It's like, hey, can we give some love to Texas State? That's yeah, like they a played super a good complete game. game. <laughs> it's a super complete game. I don't know. It it, it it bugs me a little bit, and and because of 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 what's going on. For example, like you know, now one of the ones I think is is interesting. Like, Tech goes up to Oklahoma State with a third string quarterback and and gives them everything they want. Yeah. And the narrative behind that, I think, is like, oh, wow, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State escaped, stuff like that. Kind of the same way with Alabama. Mm-hmm. Alabama escapes. It's like, oh, it's all about Alabama escaping. I think what that did was it showed you both what Tech and A&M truly are, which is I think they're both quality football teams. Mm-hmm. I think A&M's got some bigger issues. But, like, they can very clearly, when they play to their paper, they can very clearly contend with anybody. And Tech is the same way. They've very clearly got their issues. But, like, they're a solid ball club. Mm-hmm. And so I think that w- what is a little annoying about this past, like, the, the narratives coming out of this week of college football is that I think that there's just a lot more talk about the teams that these Texas teams played as opposed to what the Texas teams did on the field. Mm-hmm. That's me. And thought number three, streak stoppers. We mentioned Burleson Centennial. So Burleson Centennial beats uh, Denton Ryan, and they snap Denton Ryan's 52-game district winning streak. But that wasn't even close to the biggest... Well, I got to be honest. Street Kinder. Because you know who they get this week? Alito. They get Alito. And Alito has the state's longest district winning streak. Mm-hmm. And I want to say 106, 107. I need to look at it. And it is in severe peril because this Burleson Centennial team is for real. It's at Centennial, too. So home but, field advantage. Oh, yeah. But then there was the one in the six man ranks that we told you about. Yep. Where Cherokee goes to Richland Springs. And they beat Richland Springs seventy eight to seventy eight to forty seven. That game was Richland I don't I don't know if Richland Springs ever led in that game, but it was a little nip and tuck into about the fourth quarter until Richland Springs or sorry, Cherokee stood on the gas and pulled away. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say it was a very close game at halftime. It's Richland Springs that's that's uh, the first time somebody has beat Richland Springs at Richland Springs since 2013, August 2013. It's the first time that a district opponent has beaten Richland Springs since October 2001. So we were talking... 21 to, years, basically. I was going to say we were talking about it, and technically the game streak is not as long because yes. six-man teams play fewer games. They're just in smaller districts. Right, but... From yeah, a, from a, from a four team district to a eight team district, yes. it, there's it's hard to compare. Right. So game wise, but year wise, twenty one years from a duration perspective. The Alito's district winning streak, I want to say, started like oh seven. Yeah, something like that. It's so like it's like 07. it's technically six years longer. Yes, but the games just aren't as much. Correct. So there was that, and then also I want to give a shout out because from another perspective of of streak, streak stoppers, Houston Sam Houston. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this. They beat. Um, they beat Houston Chavez on Friday night. That snapped a 99-game district losing streak. Let's go. Congratulations to the Tigers. That's Good awesome. Win. You know you wanted anyway. to do that before you hit the triple digits. <laughs> Absolutely. Great win. Anyway, there's three big thoughts. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker to 
Weatherford running back Joseph Polk. He ran for 265 yards and three touchdowns in the Ruse's win. Keep an eye on, on the Kangaroos. Uh, they are really cooking. A helmet sticker to Incarnate Word quarterback Lindsey, not Lonzy, Lindsey Scott Jr. Okay? Lindsey Scott Jr. Because against Lamar, Lindsey Scott Jr. threw for 401 yards and seven touchdowns in the first half. Jeez. 401 yards and seven touchdowns in the first half. I believe they pulled him at halftime because they were up, uh, I think, 56 to 10. Or 56, yeah, 56 10. They pulled him, they put Stephen Duncan in, they ran, the, they ran the ball the rest of the way. Yeah, 401 yards and seven touchdowns, 23 to 26 in one half. It seems good. And finally, and I don't like to do this because normally if you get a helmet sticker, I don't like, you're not up for Mr. Texas Football Player of the Week. Mm-hmm. But these numbers were too absurd to, um, to pass up. Rochelle wide receiver Sean Estes had 23 catches for 334 yards and nine touchdowns receiving. He's a six-man guy, okay? Rochelle is a six-man team. Got Rich on Springs this week, by the way. Ooh. Every one of those numbers I just gave you is a new six-man state record. Holy cow. Every one of them. 23 catches, state record. 334 yards receiving, state record. Nine touchdowns receiving, state record. All three of them. He caught every pass in the game. <laughs> Go on I'm and have, fairly certain. Have the time I, I need life. to look at the loan numbers because they beat loan. Yeah. It might have been every pass on either side. Like, I don't know if loan completed a pass. So you're wow. talking about every pass in the game he was on the receiving end of. That's wild. Anyway, Rochelle, uh, Rochelle uh, a helmet sticker to Rochelle, wide receiver Sean Estes. Thanks to Lehman Saunders, six man guru, for, for flagging me on that because that's ridiculous. Three, to, three teams to watch. Kilgore. Another team that I think is interesting and maybe kind of vaulting back into that bigger conversation. Kilgore goes and they beat um, they beat Lindale in, in an impressive fashion. Now we, had, these are team, this is a Kilgore team that, that has two losses on the year. Mm-hmm. But their losses are to Carthage and Gilmer. Seems reasonable. Since then, they've rattled off five straight, including last week's win, at Lindale, 49-35. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on the Bulldogs. I think they're back. Texas State? <laughs> How about them Bobcats? What the hell was that? Uh, the best game that they've played in oh, decades. That is... I was a listener to Republic of Football, our college football podcast. They have a great breakdown, and I defer to all things Texas... Uh, to Ishmael Johnson, all things Texas State. He said this is their biggest win since 2014 when they beat Arkansas State. Yes, it has to be. Um... And this is and, and by the way, this ain't fluky. No. They they pummeled them. They're up 24-3 at half. Mm-hmm. I think the thing is even had App State not beaten AM, I think this still would have been the biggest oh my win. Gosh. They just not as much national attention would have come from it. Lane Hatcher throws for two eighty one and two touchdowns. He looked the best he had. They were they were Jake Spavtol was drawing them up, man. They really were. What? I saved his job. <laughs> and three teams watch Canadian. Another team that maybe you threw dirt on because they, they lost back to back weeks mm-hmm. uh, back in, in non district. But they're in district play now and they're they're humming. They went and they pummeled Childress. They threw them into the wood chipper. Sixty two to twenty eight. They look a lot more Camden Cavalier, their quarterback, they look a lot more like the Canadian we're used to than we than we did back in week three when they're coming off of a loss at Elk City, Oklahoma, and they were one and two. I think they've gotten the wheels back on. Anyway, three teams to watch. Three to see. Let's take a look at the week ahead. Westlake and Dripping Springs. Um, Westlake's got the state's longest winning streak right now um, at 46 games. Um, I think it's in real peril to this game. They're on the road. They're playing a certified stud in quarterback Austin Novosad. Dripping Springs is is anxious to get they're big. They're like they're real big. They've already got a win over Vandergrift, but they're real, real big. Six A win to announce here. They can certainly do that. Big game in Austin. Oklahoma State TCU. It's a lighter slate in the college football world this week in Texas, but this is right now. Right now, sports gun to your head. This is your Big Twelve championship game, right? 
It has to be. Like, I mean, it's not going to be like, OU. It would be a rematch in that, like, this would be a rematch of this mm -hmm. right here, right? Right now. Had Texas not dropped one to Tech, then we might have right. a different conversation. But right now, it has to be. Right. So, Oklahoma State and TCU, huge game, massive implications. And the winner has got to feel really good about mm -hmm. getting into the Big 12 championship. Yeah, Craven said it perfectly. He tweeted out, he's like, I'm really glad I already put in that credential request a couple weeks ago because he was like, that press box is about to fill Lined up like up. this. And finally, Hitchcock and Columbus. I'm so excited for These this These are one. your boys. You, I, are, you, are the, you are the Hitchcock stand around. I here. am, and I wish more, like, I know we're supposed to be sending a reporter out on Bally's mm -hmm. for this game, and I wish that I could be there. I really do. Huge game. Columbus has looked great. We talked with Matt Schobel on Football Friday on Friday night, and uh, they were, they're cooking. Columbus is a team that, again, we thought would be good, but maybe not this good. Mm -hmm. um, they are humming right now, but Hitchcock's 7-0. and It's another battle of unbeatens. Huge game this week. That's three to see. That's Monday morning fallout.